We are at the William L. Clements Library at the University of Michigan. We're a special collections repository, cares for, collects, and preserves primary source materials related to the history of early America. Today we're talking about a few of the manuscripts and books from uh, Mr. Clement's original donation, uh, again, in uh, 1923. To represent the, the book division of the library, we've selected this rather unassuming uh, volume written in, in, in Latin and printed in 1493 in Rome. Um, it's a printed version of Columbus's letter to the King and Queen of Spain in which he describes his discovery uh, of the New World. So this is the, uh, the first printed account of what later becomes the Americas. It's the cornerstone of any good uh, collection of early Americana. Roughly 17 editions were printed before 1500. Um, this Rome edition again is 1493. So with these cornerstone collections of the Manuscripts Division, we have um, a, a, an unparalleled uh, look into the British administration of the uh, American military ventures for the, for the revolution. Um, any dissertations, any original research done on the British side of the American Revolution must make use of these materials. They are um, extensive and provide uh, the most uh, direct uh, sort of resources on, on the conflict from the British perspective. Here is a manuscript written in the hand of Thomas Gage in April 18th of 1775 in which he gives orders to Lieutenant Colonel Francis Smith to pull together a group of grenadiers and light infantrymen to uh, seize military stores at uh, Concord, west of the city of Boston. Sir, you will march with the Corps of Grenadiers and light infantry put under your command with the utmost expedition and secrecy to Concord, where you will seize and destroy all the artillery and ammunition provisions, tents, and all other military stores you can find. In effect, this is the draft of the order that begins the American Revolution. Mr. Clements uh, also acquired the papers of Sir Henry Clinton. Uh, he, they were purchased in 1925, arrived in the States in 1926. One of the interesting uh, components of Sir Henry Clinton's papers, and which was rather profound, was a lengthy a uh, set of correspondence and documents pertaining to Benedict Arnold and his treasonous correspondence with uh, the British headquarters. A, uh, a letter written in code by Benedict Arnold, it's a, uh, a dictionary substitution code um, in groups of three. Um, these numbers describe the page number of a previously determined volume, the line number, and the word number um, of a particular page. And once deciphered, this, uh, this particular manuscript is Benedict Arnold's conditions um, for uh, the um, act of turning over the important post of West Point uh, to, to the British. Um, this sheet is a contemporary translation of the coded document, and I'll, I'll read a passage from, from that. If I point out a plan of cooperation by which Sir Henry shall possess himself of West Point, the garrison, etc., 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 20,000 pounds sterling, I think, will be a cheap purchase for an object of so much importance. Another example of an item from Henry Clinton's papers is written during the uh, John Burgoyne's expedition in 1777. A number of items in Clinton's papers are written in code in various forms where the writer and the recipient both would have a mask, a piece of paper with some shape or multiple shapes cut from it. Um, both having this mask, the writer would place the mask over another sheet of paper and they would write the intended correspondence in the shape of that uh, in, the, in the shape of that opening and then meticulously construct a letter around it so that in the case where this letter would be captured by the enemy 
the actual intended message would be buried um, to anyone who doesn't have and doesn't know to use uh, the mask in question. In this case, William Howe, his, his commander of the army at this point, uh, commander of the British army at this point, um, is taking his troops to Philadelphia rather than providing support to John Burgoyne uh, in the north, in Albany. Um, this letter from Henry Clinton is informing John Burgoyne of this unfortunate uh, circumstance and that, and that he is unable to provide any additional resources um, to him. From the letter uh, without the mask, he says, you will have heard, dear sir, I doubt not long before this can have reached you, that Sir William Howe is gone from hence. The rebels imagine that he has gone to the eastward by this time. However, he has filled Chesapeake Bay with surprise and terror. Once the mask is placed over the manuscript, the letter reiterates a similar sentiment, but also provides Henry Clinton's uh, thoughts on the matter. He states, Sir William Howe has gone to Chesapeake Bay with the greatest part of the army. I hear he has landed, but I'm not certain. I am left to command here, it's in New York, uh, with too small a force to make any effectual diversion in your favor. I shall try something at any rate. It may be of use to you. I own to you, I think, Sir William's move just at this time has been the worst he could have taken. Also within Clinton's papers is this letter written by Charles Cornwallis in October of 1781, in which he's informing his commander-in-chief of his, the necessity of his surrender at Yorktown in Virginia, the letter announcing essentially the conclusion of the American Revolution. I have the mortification to inform your excellency that I have been forced to give up the posts of York and Gloucester and to surrender the troops under my command by capitulation on the 19th as prisoners of war to the combined forces of America and France. The next manuscript I'd like to show is a manuscript written by Tobias Lear, George Washington's personal secretary, describing, uh, the, describing the general's last hours at Mount Vernon in Virginia. This is Tobias Lear's handwriting. Um, he's providing this particular account um, to a recipient with an interest in Washington's last sickness and death. In it, he describes George Washington's efforts to go out and mark trees for cutting on Mount Vernon uh, and his estate, um, his bringing home a sore throat and cough, and subsequent, uh, subsequently his decline in health and unexpected death in mid-December of 1799. Um, Lear, being at the house, describes the comings and goings of the doctors of the family. He describes Washington's mood and his statements. Um, it's a rather extensive description and quite, quite lovely for a, a deathbed description. I'd like to read, if I may, um, the statement regarding Washington's death on December 14th of 1799. Lear writes, about 10 o'clock, he made several attempts to speak to me before he could effect it. At length, he said, quote, I am just going. Have me decently buried, and do not let my body be put into the vault in less than two days after I am dead, end quote. I bowed assent. He looked at me again and said, quote, do you understand me, unquote. I replied, yes, sir. Quote, Tis well, said he. About 10 minutes before he expired, his breathing became much easier. He lay quietly, he withdrew his hand from mine, and felt his own pulse. Spoke to Dr. Craig, who sat by the fire. He came to the bedside, the general's hand fell from his wrist. I took it in mine and laid it upon my breast. Dr. Craig put his hands over his eyes, and he expired without a struggle or a sigh. The William Clements Library is a premier repository for the study of early American history, currently stretching to about 19, the year 1900. Um, the library is open to scholars and to the public, and uh, we always encourage 
uh, researchers to come and utilize the materials.